Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And with Photo Kina winding up this weekend, I thought it an appropriate time to sit back, take stock over the last 12 months or so, and name the 2016 Travel Camera of the Year. Now, this is not a hypothetical exercise. I just returned from two and a half weeks in Europe, getting home shortly before Photo Kina started, uh, traveling through Switzerland, Italy, and Germany. And prior to departure, of course, I was thinking, what gear do I take with me? My go-to camera is a Sony a6300. I love the imagery in both still and in 4K. I love the high frame rates, 120 frames per second in HD. Uh, pretty much, I love everything about it, uh, except the thermal shutoffs and the 30-minute limitation. Okay. With that being said, the native lenses that are available for it now, the lenses that I own, that I have gone out and paid my own hard-earned cash for, run everywhere from the 12mm f2.8 Zeiss to it, uh, through the 28mm and 50mm Sony lenses, which are incredibly sharp for the price. Sharp, period, but for the price, my god. And then Sony's own 90mm f2.8 macro, also tack sharp. And when you apply that full frame 90 millimeter to a crop sensor like the 6300 and then use Sony's clear image zoom, well, I basically had a focal length range, if I were to take all of them, of about 18 millimeters to 300 millimeter full frame equivalent while preserving the ability to get very shallow depth of field, which uh, beginning as a still photographer, I just love. On the other hand, that's a lot of weight to carry, and I really didn't feel like carrying all of that. Now, I also have an Apple iPhone 6S Plus, optical image stabilization, 4K uh, video recording, 12 megapixel stills, pretty darned nice, although of course the image falls apart in low light. And you are almost limited to the 30 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view of the built-in lens, except for the fact that we also happen to have a set of the Schneider iPro lenses uh, with the iPro cases for the 6S Plus and Claudius 6. So that gave us a little wiggle room. But what if I could get any camera I wanted? What if I could reach out to my usual sources? What cameras might I want? Well, uh, on the short list, you have to consider a pile of cameras from Sony, and I'm not a Sony fanboy. Well, yeah, maybe I am, but it's on the basis of facts. So, the RX100 Mark IV, an obvious contender. I actually bought the RX100 Mark IV, but ended up returning it because I didn't like the way you had to open and close or pull out the uh, viewfinder before you pop it down or pop it up. Um, I really am intrigued by the Panasonic GX85, on the other hand. Not much bigger than the RX100 Mark IV, but also 4K recording, this time in a micro four-thirds package, but with the added benefit of interchangeable lenses. Very, very interesting. Of course, you can't really talk about the ultimate travel camera without talking about the Sony RX10 Mark III, which I reviewed recently and thought would be a terrific travel camera. In fact, if you wanted to preserve as many options as possible while traveling as lightly as possible, that might be the go-to camera. 24 to 600 millimeter, uh, full frame equivalent focal length, 4K recording, microphone jack, the 20.1 megapixel one inch sensor definitely punches above its weight class. Really think it's very, very good and uh, the ergonomics are actually better than the A6300. On the other hand, at Photokina, Panasonic announced what is arguably its Mark IV version of Sony's own RX10 Mark III with the FZ2000. Basically, it is also a 20.1 megapixel, one inch sensor camera. Hmm. You think the sensor is the same as the RX10 uh, Mark III and II and Sony Z150? Could be. 
Uh, it's got a pretty uh, wide focal length uh, range, full frame equivalent of about uh, 24, or is it 28, to 480 millimeters. Uh, I don't mind giving up that extra 120 millimeters at the top end for a built-in neutral density filter uh, and the ability to record 10-bit 422 4K, 10-bit 422 4K out to an external recorder. Although it has to be said, having an external recorder kind of defeats the purpose and the camera wasn't available to me anyway. Well, then you have to start thinking I guess, about uh, Canon's EOS M5. Now, this camera isn't available yet either, but it looks like it's got really great ergonomics. It's got what appears to be a very good touch user interface with the sensor straight out of the 80D. And... Uh, it looks pretty darn small. Canon's first serious mirrorless camera? We'll have to see. That would have been interesting. Not available. Even if there's no 4K. Then you've got a couple of really expensive, really interesting cameras. The Leica Q 24 megapixel full frame sensor mated to a fixed 28 millimeter Leica lens. Gorgeous body. Gorgeous industrial design. I, I, yeah, it's beautiful. But then, for a couple of hundred dollars less, at the $4,000 mark, is the Sony RX1 R Mark II, which I had a chance to play with in New York City at a press event uh, earlier in the year. And also full frame, although it takes the sensor from the A7R II, 42 megapixels, and it is a great sensor fantastic sensor. Made it in this case to a fixed length, uh, uh, non-interchangeable 35 millimeter lens, which I think would actually be closer to the focal length I would want to use if I could only have one. I mean, after all, Cartier-Bresson had iconic images with a 35 millimeter Leica rangefinder and typically either a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens uh, in an era when ASA 400 was exotic. So you ought to be able to capture some amazing images with those cameras. On the other hand, pocketable is a relative term. And I suppose if you're carrying or wearing, wearing a uh, barber waxed cotton jacket, those pockets are big enough for those two cameras. Uh, but then I even had my whole concept of a travel camera stretched when uh, I had a chance to sit down and play with Hasselblad's new X1D a 50 megapixel mirrorless camera, medium format 50 megapixel, um, Hasselblad's first, with an incredible uh, user interface. Wow. If I could have gotten my hands on that, I would have. But in the end, I ended up taking the A6300 with one lens, the 28 millimeter. Claudia took the A6000 with one lens, the 50 millimeter and we brought our cell phones. So, given what I took, given what else is out there and definitely is in the running for Travel Camera of the Year, what is my selection for the 2016 Travel Camera of the Year? A plane ticket. Go out and spend the money on a plane ticket. You know why? Because any camera that you bought new over the last five or ten years is good enough. Any smartphone with a camera in the last two or three years is going to be just fine.
we take these cameras because we want to capture the moments, capture the experience. But I realized I'm less interested in capturing the experience than living it. Go out, spend the money on a ticket. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time. If you like what you've seen here, please thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the blog, www.hughbrownstone.com. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Enjoy.